So as I was saying earlier in this video, the source of some of the creativity and insight that Tesla had into the nature of the world was in a sense inspired by contact with other um, sort of intelligence that was enabled by his discovery. And in a sense, this is, this is one of the, the, um, the darker uh, periods of, of recent history in that mankind really wasn't prepared for what was actually happening and didn't, still to this day doesn't really understand the, um, the mechanisms, the uh, details that surround uh, what has been the technological revolution. And something else happened um, around, the, the, around the 14th. And on the 19th, we, uh, we had a lot of aurora activity, uh, the aurora borealis, that wasn't associated with the geomagnetic storm, but was associated with the Earth's field uh, uh, sort of weakening and um, shifting a little bit. It shifted a little bit south. And when this happens, the um, aurora borealis uh, comes uh, theoretically from the wind from the sun. Uh, it gets closer to the earth than it usually is. It usually gets, and it rarefies the uh, the gases and releases the aurora borealis. Um, and this this also um, this aurora is the um, the the legendary hyperborean. Uh, light, the, sh the, the Shangri-La uh, light that, you know, is, is associated with this sort of uh, uh, divine uh, contact. But the, if you, if you trace back what would have been that electromagnetic uh, movement, it usually takes uh, about four or five days to arrive. And since it arrived, on the 19th, that means that if it if the source of this disturbance actually was uh, the interplanetary magnetic field between the Earth and the Sun, then that propagation time would have put the the source of that particular storm on about on about the 14th. Now, this isn't something that I had prophesied. Um, obviously, I'm, I'm just kind of reacting to uh, a story that has been going around um, on, uh, on the internet and in this particular uh, uh, community. And so I'm just, I'm just chiming in on a few of the uh, directions that, you know, if, if someone uh, was uh, in contact with something that um, that foresaw this occasion and you know if there are many worlds you know this would have been the place where the worlds could split off in in different directions um, or, or at least uh, the possibilities become more numerous at these particular uh, energetic junctions um, then we have to we have to consider uh, what's what's being what's being said here and if I could give advice to anybody that's doing this kind of work, it would be to try to put what you're doing in perspective and try to understand that what we think we know about the nature of the universe is only a guess. And a lot of people uh, don't realize that the ideas that we have about the nature of things, um, in a sense, come from other other places, other um, dimensions. Whether or not we are in touch with um, with that uh, mechanism, Tesla's discovery um, uh, was remarkable for a number of reasons. Not just because 
of the recreation of this phenomenon but because in a sense that recreation of the phenomenon was um, I believe guided I believe there was uh, guidance involved with that uh, discovery that um, was a sort of necessity in a sense uh, from some perspective or at least enabling um, from some perspective. I think the, the sadness, the, the real tragedy, is that the, the discovery isn't put into perspective um, with uh, the, histor the, the historical context. The, um, the St. Elmo's fire phenomenon, the, um, the uh, thing that led Moses to believe that he was uh, divinely inspired um, to create the Ten Commandments um, is something that um, in, in later years after after Moses became became the fascination of the uh, the alchemists the the fifth element is what Tesla learned how to uh, control and manipulate um, to an extent um, the classical elements are, are very ill understood in uh, Western society um, and considered to be kind of primitive and it's really kind of sad that um, the, the, the very little is known uh, understood about about this and um, it seem to be very few people that really get it um, the the earth air uh, fire and water uh, the classical elements, the four classical elements, um, are, are considered elemental because they're required for life. We have to have water, we have to have uh, nourishment in the form of uh, physicality, earth in a sense, this uh, solid substance. Um, we have to have warmth and we have to have water and air, like I mentioned water. Um, but there's another one, a more mysterious one, and uh, one modern um, uh, translation of this that I uh, ran into from Elena Laboda is continuum or continuity. Um, it's also understood to be uh, life force or spirit essence. Um, uh, the fifth element, the quinta essentia, uh, the, w the place where we get the word uh, the, uh, quintessential. And Tesla discovered this, but it's easier to see when this is not present. It's easier to see when it is, isn't present than when it is, because this is the most mysterious. And one of the things that was done with alternating current um, early on was to remove the life from something. Um, Thomas Edison was uh, very uh, opposed to alternating current. And he claimed that it was evil, and he would, um, a lot of people probably heard the story, he would go around uh, using it to electrocute dogs and showing that uh, how, how evil alternating current was. And while this was obviously a, a, an error on Edison's part, uh, to an extent, um, there is a certain... Um, uh, there is a certain significance to to this because if you think about uh, the the way that, that that the body is left after after that type of thing, um, it has warmth. It has uh, uh, all of the things that we normally consider necessary for life, but there's something else that's missing, something else that's been disturbed, and that is its continuum. And so. With the discovery of uh, alternating current, in a sense, Tesla learned how to start manipulating uh, the continuum itself, the, the space-time continuum itself, in a uh, previously unknown way.